So we're going to need a piece of silver that's about this big. So here's the stone we're going to be using. And this is a piece of 22 gauge silver sheet metal that we're going to be cutting to make the backing of our pendant. So I'm going to mark on my piece of silver where the stone will be and then redraw all of my original drawing onto it to make sure everything will fit. Then I'm going to draw a box around it that's about three to five millimeters away from it so we have room to work and so we have something to grab onto when we're cutting after the piece has been soldered. This is what I use to lubricate the saw blade. It's called Pro Cut and it's a lot better than the oil I was using before. Now all you have to do is follow the line around it and cut it out. This should take about a minute or so so I'm going to fast forward. If you do not know how to use a jeweler saw, I have a basic video on how to use them. Alright, and there you go, now you have your back plate. This is fine silver bezel wire. This will hold our stone in place. The reason why you use fine silver is it's easier to bend and move around, and we're going to need to do a lot of that to actually set our stone. Be sure that your bezel wire is tall enough to hold your stone in place. Also, make sure the bezel wire is straight on the end. You can fix this with a file if you need to. So now all you have to do is wrap your stone with the bezel wire. Make sure to start in the middle of one of the sides and do not start on the corner. It'll make everything harder later. Try to make the wire as snug as you can around the stone. When you get all the way back to the beginning of the wire, make sure you overlap it a little bit. So yours should look like this. Now you need to mark and cut the wire. So you can solder them together, you have to make sure that they match up evenly. Make sure the ends of your bezel are snug against one another. An easy way to do this is to bend them like this, and then pull them back, and they should have enough force on them to keep one another together. So now get it ready for soldering. I'm using a third hand to do this. And make sure to put flux on them, and use a piece of hard solder. And when you are actually soldering this, make sure to keep torch on it for very little bits of time until solder flows or you'll melt the piece due to it being so thin. Once you're done with that, quench your part in some water and check if you did everything right. Make sure everything's lined up properly and everything's flush and make sure that they're not sticking up from one another. Once that's done and everything looks good, we go ahead and put it inside of a pickle pot to take all the fire scale and everything off of it. Now that we have the bezel cleaning, we can start on the silver balls for the outside of the pendant. I like to use this segmented wire. It helps keep the balls that you're going to be making the same size. All you have to do is cut the same amount of segments and it should make the same size every time. You can really use any wire to do this. As long as you can cut it to the right size and the same size every time, you'll end up with the same size ball. For the twisted wire, you can just buy already made twisted wire, or you can do what we're going to do and use 20 gauge sterling silver wire to make our own and a drill. So all you're going to need to do is take a length of wire, fold it in half, and with the two separate ends, put them inside of the drill and tighten it down over it. Make sure they stay pretty much right next to one another. Once you have that nice and tight, your wire should look something like this. So now you're going to want to tighten up the U-shape and grab a pair of pliers to hold it. Basically any set of pliers that has a small tip to it will work. And then go ahead and start using the drill slowly and it'll start winding up your wire. You don't want to do this too much because you can actually break your wire or make it start twisting in odd ways that you're not going to want. So just go slow with it and make sure it gets to the point that you want and go ahead and stop. After you're done with that, slowly release the pressure from the pliers. It might want to turn on you a little bit, just go with it slowly and make sure it doesn't whip around if it's too tightly wound. And now you can take it out of the drill. So this is what yours should look like after you're done. This also works with other wires, but make sure to anneal them before doing this. It makes it a lot easier. So now we're going to get all the silver balls made for the outside of the pendant. So to do this, you're going to need a charcoal block, some flux, and of course a torch. I use the charcoal block to do this so it leaves a flat bottom to all of our silver balls so they don't move around. This also makes them stay on better due to the extra surface area for the solder to adhere them to the plate. So before doing this, make sure you're in a ventilated area or have some sort of vacuum sucking all the fumes away. Also make sure to wear some welding goggles to protect your eyes because this gets very bright and it could damage your eyes. Now all you have to do is heat the piece of silver up until it balls up and as soon as it 
turns into a ball, remove the heat from it and let it cool down. If you let it cool too much, it will get stuck to your charcoal block and you'll have to either break it off or reheat it to get it off. Once it starts to dull, you'll be able to pick it up with some tweezers and you can quench it in some water. And here's what it should look like when it's done. If it has any bubbles or holes, make sure to remelt it. After the first ball you make, make sure that it's around the size that you're looking for for one of the balls on your piece. And then you can scale up and down in how much material you use. This way you know exactly how much to use to make each size and then make sure to write it down so you don't forget. So now you need to make rest of the balls. And this first ball needed to be a little bit bigger to be the biggest ones that I needed, so I added one more piece of the segmented silver wire. If you're using just straight normal wire, you're going to have to play with it until you figure out a length and then add equal lengths to make sure that you get the same thing every time. So now that you have all the balls done, you're going to want to mock them up on your pitcher with your stone to see if everything fits how you want it to. So now we need to pick all of our parts. A good way to do this is with a coffee filter or a paper towel. It keeps all your small parts together, but it'll still get them all clean. And it makes it so you don't have to fish around inside the pot or lose any of them. So just make sure it's bundled up pretty good and drop it in the pickle pot. And it should take about 30 minutes or so to clean everything up. In the meantime, let's check on our bezel and make sure it fits our stone and make sure it cleaned up properly. So here it is and it looks pretty good and clean. It has misshapen a little bit, which is perfectly normal. And once you put your stone inside of it, it should go back to how it was. So if it doesn't fit your stone, make sure that it's facing the right direction that you made it in and if your stone is a weird shape or not perfectly square, make sure you line up everything properly. If it still doesn't fit after that, you can take away some metal from the inside of the bezel, but with how thin of a bezel I have, it probably wouldn't be a good idea. Um, other than that, you'd have to make a new one. Now we need to take the twisted wire and shape it into the right shapes and cut it to the right sizes. So now you're going to want the wire that you made or the wire you're going to use and your picture reference. Now I'm going to make it so my wire will bend along with my stone. So if you're using an oval stone and you're doing segmented pieces of wire, you're probably going to want to actually put it up to the stone and bend it along with it. Makes it a lot easier. Mine are pretty much straight with a little bit of a bend so I can do it on paper. I also suggest having all your parts already on here and done before doing this part so you, you can fill in the gaps. And not every piece of this will be exactly the same size because the balls would form a little bit bigger or smaller or they might just be spaced a little bit weird. So make sure everything is on here first. I'm just going to eyeball it from now but I'm going to go back and fix everything. So now we're going to make this bend for the top. Make sure you have something round and metal that you can put it around to help shape the first part of this. I'm going to use a little bit more wire than I know I need so I have something to work with and it gives me a little bit extra to leverage it around this. Alright, make sure to check it against your reference picture to see if the bend is at the right angle that you want. And if it is, grab a pair of pliers and pinch it right at the point where it turns again, like in mine. That way you can bend it to match the picture. Once you have that done and to your liking, make sure to flip it over and do it to the other side also. This is why I used more wire than I needed. It makes it so you can actually bend this piece without hurting your fingers or using another set of pliers. Once you have all the bends and everything to your liking with all your adjustments done, go ahead and cut it. Make sure to cut it as even as possible. We might have to go back later and cut it again to fit everything, but for now, just make it even. Now I'm just going to mock up some of the wire to make sure it's fitting right and looks proper. So here's a close-up of the bezel and the wires I just made to show you how everything's fitting together so far. So here's everything that I have made so far. And as you can see, this piece of wire is way too big for any of this. So I'm going to take a pair of calipers and measure it and then mark the piece, cut it, and fit it in place. When doing this part, be very careful because if you nudge anything, it could move everything out of place and then you have to reset up everything. So this can be kind of tedious sometimes. And here's everything all together for the pendant. Everything's in place and this is how it will all be soldered together. This is a tripod and screen soldering setup. You're going to need to solder your piece from the bottom so this will help. Also you can use a third hand if you do not have one of these. And this is how you would want to position it with a third hand. You make it as flat as possible so nothing can slide off. It's a little harder, but you can use this. But anyways, back to the tripod and screen setup. I'm going to flux the piece of silver that I cut out for the backing on the front and back. This will help all the solder flow 
because we're going to need that to happen over a large area. It will also keep all of the pieces stuck to it when we're putting everything together. So once you have all this done, you can actually start putting your pieces onto it. Make sure all your parts are clean and have flux on them, and then go ahead and start assembling your piece. In some of the tighter areas or the areas that look like you won't be able to get your solder on the outside edges of, you can actually put it underneath some of the pieces, like the larger balls or some of the wire itself. Make sure it's a really thin piece of solder, but it will help guarantee everything will be stuck down the first time you do this, so you don't have to go back and re-solder things. So off to the side, I like to make a little puddle of flux so I can put my solder pieces into it so they are fluxed also. Just makes it easier for me. So this might be one of the most tedious parts of all of this, is actually setting the little tiny pieces of solder all around your piece and inside of it. You will accidentally move things, you will have to put things back, it can be frustrating. If you do get frustrated, just put it down walk away from it for a little bit. And if your flux dries out in that time, you can add a little bit of water to the area to get everything moving again. My rule of thumb for placing solder is every corner of the bezel inside and then every wall has a piece of solder and then all around the outside every individual piece gets its own piece of solder and if it is a longer piece like the wires they get one or two pieces on top of that so after all of that and all your pieces are set and everything is exactly where you want it let all of your flux dry out so you don't have problem with everything moving around from water evaporating and we can finally actually solder this together so now we need to heat this whole piece from the bottom until all of the solder flows under everything and through everywhere basically and sticks it down. So to do this you take your torch even if you have just a propane $20 torch this will work it just takes a little bit more time. You're gonna want to feather the heat onto it and moving it on and off of it a lot just to get it heated up so your flux will start to move a little bit and you don't want everything to move all at once and mess up your piece. You want to have some tweezers handy or a solder pick just in case something moves you can push it back but still heat it up very slowly at first or you're not going to have a good time with this. Make sure you evenly heat the whole piece and when the flux starts doing this make sure you do not stay in any same spot for too long or you will actually start melting parts of it. You can melt edges, you can melt the back, you melt a hole through it, so just be careful. So once it looks like almost all your flux has disappeared and your solder will might turn black, might not, it just depends on what you're using, you'll start to see your solder glowing. And this is right before everything is about to start flowing, so keep on evenly heating it and you'll be able to see when stuff is starting to flow. Once that happens, Keep the torch on it for a couple seconds, if that, and it'll flow through everything and then take the heat off of that one part and just keep going around until all your solder has melted. You can go on top of your piece to help melt some of the harder solder pieces that are just not flowing, but you do run the risk of melting any of the little parts or your bezel that's on top of this and you would pretty much have to scrap the entire thing. So only do this if you really think that this is going to help, if not, you can always clean the whole piece off, reflux everything, and put a new piece of solder on and do this again. It's a lot safer. I'm not going to be cutting or fast forwarding any of this soldering part because it's really important to see how little you have to keep the flame on and how much I move around to make sure nothing melts. You can also tell things have soldered down if they start glowing with the bottom plate. If you look at the balls on here, some of them will be a darker color and other ones will be the same brightness as the plate. That means that one has actually been soldered to it. Once you're done soldering, let the piece cool down. You can do this by just leaving it on the screen or you can take it and put it on say a ceramic plate or a large piece of metal and it'll help it cool down faster. Do not quench it because you can warp the piece depending on how hot it is. As we wait for our pendant to cool down, let's uh, get started on designing the top piece. So we already have it drawn up, but this is just the front. We need to fold this over. So you're gonna have to redraw it real quick and add about two to three millimeters to it and it should look a little something like this. Once we get that done we can start bending our wire to match our drawing. The rest of this process is about the same as making the pendant part so a lot of this I'm going to fast forward through but you still need to watch out for things not soldering properly or fully. 
So we're going to solder it the same way we did the pendant. I did have to go back after doing this and put two more solder points right at the widest part of this because it did not solder down and when I started to bend it, I realized it started moving on me and it wouldn't work right if I did that. So I had to fix that. So after that, we can now cut it out from the backing plate and we'll have our piece and then we'll start shaping it after this. To shape this piece is pretty easy. All you need is two sets of flat pliers with wide mouths would be best and you put them on either side leaving a gap in the middle and slowly start bending it to exactly how you want it. Make sure to check on it every so often to make sure nothing is coming unsoldered or bending weird and make sure it's bending uniformly all the way across. So you're going to want to bring both points pretty close to one another but still leave a gap. We're going to be soldering in a small piece of wire here that will make it so the pendant can move back and forth while this is on it. So check your piece and make sure everything looks right and everything is soldered down properly. You've got to keep checking your solder points on stuff like this, especially if you're doing this for the first time or coming back to it after a long time. Then mock it up with your pendant and see if it fits properly. If it doesn't fit, you can still open it up or close it more depending if it's too loose. We're still going to have to open and close it again anyways because we're going to be soldering that piece in. Make sure to pickle your piece before you're soldering it. If you don't, this isn't going to work very well. So now we're going to use a piece of wire. This will depend on how big your piece is, so it'll vary. But the piece I'm using is 1.3 millimeters thick, and I'm just going to play around with the size until I find something that's good for this. But you can measure your piece and how much clearance you want and do all that. One other thing to do is to make sure that your piece is completely flat when you're putting it in here. So when you solder it in, it's straight up and down. To do this, you can use the same flat pliers that I use normally, put the piece into it, and then use a file on it, and it should come out perfectly flat. Welcome to some more super tedious soldering work. So with this, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's centered at the very bottom and make sure it doesn't fall over. Make sure you use flux and use a medium or easy solder because you've already soldered this with hard solder. Just like last time when we were soldering, make sure to heat it up very slowly so it doesn't jump around a bunch and just keep your heat moving around everywhere until the solder starts to flow. Focus on that one point for about a second and then move away from it or you will melt the little tiny piece of wire. So here's the finished product. If it is bent to either side, you can always move it back with a pair of chain nose pliers. All right, now we're going to get our pendant cut out and make sure to drill a hole in the top of the pendant where your hanger is going to go through so you can actually cut inside of it. Also, if you're using a stone that you want light to go through, you can draw a design inside of the bezel part and cut out the back part of the plate and it'll let light through. Our stone doesn't look very nice with light going through it, so I'm leaving it completely solid. When cutting out your pendant, you can do two things. You can either get as close as possible if you're confident in your cutting skills or you can leave a little bit of a gap and then come back and sand it down or file it down later. So here's the pendant all cut out. I still need to clean up some of the parts inside of the bezel so our stone fits and I need to clean up the outside with the rotary tool also to just clean up some of the saw marks. To test fit your stone get a piece of dental floss or thread. Thread can break and it actually did on me so I would go with dental floss over it put it underneath your stone and then you can push it into place if you don't do this you won't be able to get your stone back out usually But with all that said, all I need to do now is attach the top piece, clean it up a little bit more, and actually set the stone in place, then buff it and clean it. To clean up the inside and outside, I use a rotary tool that is made from rubber and diamond. And basically it just, it's like sandpaper, but works way faster. So now it's time to set our stone. This style of bezel is very difficult to get right and to make it look good. And if I was to show you the full amount, it would add another 40 minutes onto this video just from setting it. So I'm going to fast forward and make a different video with a smaller stone to show you what to do and how to do it. So enjoy the next 10 minutes of me setting this stone in fast forward for about 7 seconds. 
To get this top piece on, all you're going to need to do is open it up just enough to get over your pendant piece, put it through it, and then push it back down with the pliers again. Make sure it's pretty tight here. If you didn't set your stone already and want to do this first, you can do this and then solder the piece so it can never open up again. So here it is after buffing it with some rouge. It's still caked in the rouge compound and we need to go clean it off. But after that, everything should be nice and shiny and I'm going to patina the whole thing and then buff it again. That way it leaves black in all the cracks and creases of this and gives it a more Victorian look to it. I also like how it makes every detail stand out. One really good way to get all this off is to use a Sonic jewelry cleaner. You can get them for pretty cheap, around 30 bucks, and it saves you so much time and makes everything come off so much easier. All you need is hot water and some sort of degreasing soap. So after all that, from this drawing to this piece of jewelry. I hope you liked the video and I hope you learned at least a little bit about how something like this is made. This video took a long time to actually shoot. It took about three different days of me working on it, and then even longer for me to edit every single piece together and make sure everything made sense. So let me know if you guys have any suggestions for future videos, and I'm thinking about making some sort of um, vlog so I can communicate better and actually answer questions and stuff like that. So we'll see. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions on that. Um, until then, I guess check out my other videos on how to use a jeweler saw and how to make a basic ring. And I will see you guys later. See ya.